Hey everybody, it's Mary. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today, I'm getting ready to separate some beans. I'm going to be making a uh, ham and bean soup that we're going to put in the uh, jars. But the first step, anytime you use uh, dried beans, is to sort them. You always want to look through them and make sure that you don't have any bad beans or as my mom calls them rocks sometimes you'll find little bitty black things in there sometimes you'll find a bean that just doesn't look exactly like you like so anytime that you're going to be working with beans just sort through them it take a few minutes beforehand that way you don't get an unpleasant surprise in your mouth okay I sorted through my uh, navy beans and I rinsed them really good. So I'm going to pour them in a pot. Folks, there's more than one way to soak beans. Okay. There is a traditional way to soak beans, which you wash your beans and um, you put them in the water and you let them soak overnight. Okay. I'm going to cover them with probably an inch and a half to two inches of water. Let's see like that. Uh, I'm gonna put a lid on it and bring it up to a boil, take it off and just let it sit there and let the beans soak. And while I'm doing that, I'll be uh, prepping the uh, rest of the things that I need to do this fantastic ham and bean soup. Alrighty. Our beans have set and done the uh, quick soak. Folks, it's crazy just in a couple hours how much these beans swell up. That was two one pound packages of beans and it made a humongous strainer full. But guys, these are as big as if you had left them soaking overnight. So that is how you do the quick soak method whenever you need to soak your beans. Hey folks. Let's carry on with the uh, soup. Okay, I've got my beans soaked. Remember, we done the quick soak on those. I'm going to put two cups of beans in here. Well, let's go a cup and a half of beans. How's that? That way we've got room for extra stock. Okay. Uh, to me, the ham has enough salt in there so I'm not going to add any additional salt. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Okay. I have about four cups of diced up ham. So I'm going to put about a third a cup of ham in there. Okay, I have some celery, carrots, and onions chopped. Put just a little handful. Let's less than an eighth of cup of each one of them in there. Okay. Another little bit of onion in there. Now folks, you could you could add salt. Uh, you could add garlic if you like garlic in there. You can add parsley. Whatever flavors you like in your soup, that's totally up to you. Or you could have added all of those flavors into your ham stock. But this is what I'm going to do for hours. Actually, let's put a, another couple of pieces of ham in there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna fill all my jars. So that way if I have a few leftover um, pieces of veggie or ham, I can put it in here without having to unseal something. Another jar, and we're just going to get this 
process continued. Another cup and a half of beans because folks, these beans will swell up a little bit more, okay? They're not as big as what they're going to be. And they're gonna make a nice broth and I cannot wait to have this ham and bean soup. Okay, folks, I have my jars filled. Uh, they're not cram packed in here like I would normally do uh, because I'm giving room for a little bit of expansion. The uh, veggies are gonna shrink down and the beans are gonna swell up just a little bit more. So it should be a happy marriage in the jar. Okay, I've got the uh, ham stock that we made yesterday from the uh, bone from the uh, holiday hams, the Christmas hams. So I'm just gonna ladle this in here. Move that over to prevent drooping it everywhere. I don't have one of the little fancy debubblers, guys, so I'm just going to use my knife to get the uh, excess air bubbles out of here. Okay. So you see, we're down about the inch headspace. Okay, I have a paper towel that has vinegar on there. Anytime that I can anything. With meat, I use a, a paper towel with vinegar. Otherwise, I normally use water. Okay, folks, I want to uh, tell you too, everything here is cold. I had all this stuff uh, prepped earlier today and put it in the refrigerator. I didn't have time to uh, process it. So beans cold, veggies cold, stock cold, room temperature jars, cold water in my canner. That way, we don't have any type of a thermal shock and have breakage in our jars. Okay, I put my rings on finger tight and I'm going to set them over in the, uh, the canner. I'm just going to keep going until I get all this filled. And whenever I get them in the uh, canner, folks, we are going to process these for 90 minutes. Anytime you process anything that has meat in it, you have to process for the meat time. No matter what veggies you have, you have to process for the meat time in order to make everything safe in there. Even though the ham is already cooked, you still have to, to do that. Okay. Again, just take the knife, put it down in there. See all those little bubbles coming up? Can you see that? Anyway, it just gets all the excess air out and uh, hopefully nothing will get in the way of a good seal. Okay, again, wipe the, uh, the rim of the jar off. That way, if anything is on there, uh, it won't prevent it from sealing. So again, just finger tight. Put it in the jar, and I'll bring you along whenever I get everything in the uh, canner. Okay, folks, we're down to our last jar of the uh, ham and bean soup. You'll notice that these are uh, pint jars instead of quart. I wanted to make two or three in a smaller size, just as a single serving. So I'm putting them in the uh, same canner as I am the quarts. And something I failed to mention was these lids, okay? It is not recommended with today's lids that you soak them in the uh, hot water like you used to. I guess it's because the rubber on there is so much thinner, but it's not recommended to do that now. Just wanted to be sure I got that one in. Let me go ahead and fill this last one up, and then we will get this on the on the stove and get this job going. Okay. 
again. Just make sure that you get the excess bubbles out. We don't want anything to prevent a seal or prevent it from staying good. Okay. Okay, we're going to wipe it off. Finger tight. And, folks, we have a full canner. Okay, I'm going to put my lid on this. I'm going to turn the gas on. I'm going to bring it up to pressure. I'm going to let it vent for 10 minutes. Then I'm going to start my timer. Okay, folks, good morning. To be honest with you, when I turned this canner off last night, I fell asleep before the pressure dropped. So, pressure is totally dropped. Let's open it up and see what we've got. Well, I see everything is sealed, so that's good. And folks, these are totally cool. I don't even have to use a jar lifter to take them out. There's plenty of liquid in there. I'm not going to turn them upside down and shake them or anything like that. Uh, because you're supposed to let them sit for 24 hours with the, uh, the seal on there. So let me go set these over here on my towel to let them drain. And then we can get you guys a nice close-up view of that wonderful ham and bean soup. It's actually still bubbling in these jars. Can you see it in these two jars right here? Even though it's cooled down, it's still still bubbling. But folks, as you can see, everything has sealed nicely. And that is a fantastic meal in a jar ready to happen. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel, share the video, and guys, we'll see you all in the next video.